With the release of Blackmagic Camera Update 7.9, we now have gyroscopic stabilization in cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, 6K, 6K Pro, and the new 6K G2. Welcome to another camera channel. Here's everything you need to know. What do I need? First off, you need to update your camera to firmware 7.9 or later. Anything you record with 7.9 or later will automatically record the gyro data within B-RAW. This means that anything you've recorded before 7.9 will not have any gyro data included, and you cannot use this new stabilization method. It simply won't appear. You need to record in B-RAW for this gyroscopic data to be recorded. It will not work with ProRes recordings. Lastly, you need to be using DaVinci Resolve 18 Beta 5 or later for this option to appear. At the time of recording, there are no full releases of Resolve that have this option included. So if you haven't swapped over to the beta releases of Resolve 18, then be aware of the risks that come with that, like reliability issues and other bugs and errors. How can I get it to work? After you've recorded a clip on your camera, you can import it into Resolve and onto your timeline. Under the usual stabilization options, perspective, similarity, and translation, you will see the new option, Camera Gyro. Select this option and click the Stabilize button and wait for the processing to finish. Your clip is now stabilized. If you don't have the option there, then check again that you're using the Camera Update 7.9 firmware on your camera, that you're using DaVinci Resolve 18 Beta 5 or later, and that you shot in B-RAW. The option will also not appear if you're using a lens that has image or optical stabilization turned on at the start of recording. You can adjust the strength, to tailor the results to get the look you want. By default, it's at its highest value of one, but you can reduce this value if the stabilization is too strong or unnatural looking. I found that testing values between 0.6 and 0.75 can garner better looking results in some situations. Lenses with IS or OSS. It's true that if you shoot with a lens with image or optical stabilization turned on during the start of the recording, then the camera gyro option will not appear. This is because the lens's own image stabilization will counteract the gyroscopic data, making the image shake, bounce, or move in undesirable ways. So Blackmagic Design have disabled this option right now. Maybe in the future it can be included if they can get the lens stabilization and the gyro to kind of complement each other. But for now, don't hold your breath on this ever to happen. You can have image stabilization on your lens turned off at the start of the clip and then turn it on after it started recording to see the results of image stabilization and gyroscopic stabilization combined. It's not pretty. Best practices for best results. To get the best results from this new method of stabilization, it's recommended use a faster shutter speed or angle to reduce motion blur artifacts. Although we are used to using the 180 degree shutter roll for the most natural looking motion blur, when using gyro stabilization, that blur will be noticeable in the footage after stabilization has corrected the movements, leaving trails on parts of the image that the stabilization has attempted to keep still. It's not a very nice look, so using such speeds like 90 degrees or 75 degrees can help you reduce those artifacts from being noticeable. Notice how I'm saying reduce and not eliminate, because depending on what you're doing with the camera, you may still see these in your stabilized footage. Since you are using DaVinci Resolve anyway, you can add motion blur back onto your footage later in post. Give yourself more space in your frame to offset the crop. When you stabilize your footage, there's always a crop involved as the image is zoomed to avoid black edges appearing at the sides of your video. If you untick zoom in the stabilization options, you will see how the original video has been stabilized. The more violent or dynamic the movement, the larger the crop will be, so bear that in mind when you're planning your camera moves. If you find it helpful, you can add frame guides to your camera's screen while shooting to remind yourself that the framing will be cropped during stabilization. Since the camera gyro stabilization crops 10 to 20% or more, you can try setting the guides to 90 or 80% on your camera. Only stabilize what you need. You may be tempted to just drop your clips and just hit stabilize, but this will give you bad results because there will be inevitable shaking at the start and end of your clips while hitting the record button and other unwanted movements. Seriously, even a few frames of unwanted gyroscopic recording can affect how the whole clip is stabilized. Trim your clip to only the parts you need and stabilize those parts only. The crop will be less dramatic than if you had stabilized the whole clip. Be as steady as possible. Although this new stabilization method is exciting, 
it's not gonna perform miracles. Try to be as stable as possible while shooting and help gyro stabilization help you. Do I need to calibrate the motion sensor? In the menu system of the camera is the calibrate motion sensor button. All of these tests were shot without recalibration of the motion sensor. Other YouTubers have said this is a required step to get gyro stabilization to work, but that's simply not true because I hadn't calibrated the motion sensor and the results were great, if not better than other ones I've seen on YouTube. If you are having trouble, then you can consider a recalibration, but I don't think this is a required step. I did do a test before and after a motion sensor calibration and the results were almost identical. Although the crosshair horizon marker on my camera did turn a nice blue color after calibration. Can I use a gimbal? Yes, you can use gimbals with this new stabilization method. It'll help ease out those unwanted movements, but may make your footsteps more pronounced if there are any foreground objects involved. Also remember that it will still crop the image when stabilizing. Can I use an easy rig? Yes, this method can also remove the jerkiness you can experience when using easy rigs or similar products. The results are very nice, but remember that cropping will occur when stabilizing. What if I use a tripod? Using a tripod obviously helps the camera be more stable. However, when using camera gyro stabilization, it doesn't work very well. The shot will still be cropped and you may see movement in the image as if it was handheld. It may help smooth out pans or tilts, but not really worth it. I did test this before and after a motion sensor calibration and the results were exactly the same. Can I zoom or pull focus? Unlike other stabilization methods that use purely visual tracking algorithms to stabilize, the camera gyro setting is unaffected by zooming or changing focus as long as you are stable. Any unintentional camera movement when you are zooming or focusing will affect stabilization performance. In regards to zooming, this is perhaps helped by the collection of focal length data as shown here on this page. You'll see what I mean in the next point. Can I use a manual lens or speed booster? When using a vintage, manual, or non-electronic lens, it's recommended to input the focal length of the lens in the lens data menu located on this page of the Blackmagic menu. In fact, be very careful what you type here because you will get some very crazy results. And typing text made Resolve crash for me completely. When using a speed booster, if the lens data is not transmitted, then you can try inputting a number exactly the lens focal length times the speed booster strength. This is a 35 mm Rokinon on a 0.64 times speed booster from Metabones. With the lens data setting at 22.4 millimeters on the Pocket 4K, it looks like this. However, having the lens data set to other values made the shot crop or shake in unwanted ways. If you're using a zoom, then you're in for some trouble as if the setting isn't correct, the stabilization is just unusable. I don't have a vintage zoom to test with, but looking at the results of incorrect lens data here, you can guess what the result is gonna be like. Does it work in slow motion? Yes. As you can see here in this shot, shot at 50 frames per second and at 75 degree shutter angle, you can see slow motion video works just as well as normal speed. Does it work for vertical video? Yes. You can turn the camera on its side and record and the stabilization will work just as well as if you're holding the camera in its horizontal orientation. What about spinning? Just like vertical video, you can spin the camera on its axes and the gyro data will attempt to stabilize the shot. Just like before, the more violent and dynamic the movement, the more cropping will occur. Does it work at night? Yes, you can use this stabilization method with clips shot at night. The results look just as good as they do in the day. However, due to less light, be aware of your exposure settings in regards to shutter speed as trailing motion blur from lights is very noticeable. Does it work well in a moving vehicle? Camera Gyro does a great job at attempting to stabilize your shots recorded from moving vehicles. Here are some examples from a taxi and a subway train. I think these results look really nice, but you may not want to set the stabilization at its maximum strength, as it may appear as the exterior world is more stable than the vehicle you are in. It can look a bit strange. I hope this video and the example shown gave you some useful insight into the new camera gyro stabilization for Blackmagic cameras. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you 
in the next one.